Today we're going to be learning Rosh Hashanah Daf Lamedalid. Um, today's Daf is second. Today's Daf is sponsored by Rochelle Chefetz in loving memory of her father, Shragai Kohen, Shraga Fivel ben Avraham ben Sion Halevi, on the occasion of his 19th year at sight. He would, both, he would be both bemused and proud that his daughter is learning Daf. You were terribly missed. And also on the occasion of her maternal grandparents, Rav Moshe Mashbaum, Rav Moshe Ben Yehu, Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda Lev, whose yurt site is on the fourth of Kis, was on the fourth of Kislev, and Sipora Mashbaum, Chayat Sipora Bat Rav Yaakov Moshe, whose yurt site is on the twenty third of Kislev. Okay, one last reminder to register for the Siyum to get your Zoom link. The Siyum will be on Sunday, and there's a great program. Alana Steinhain is speaking about the the quintessential rit- ritual of the shofar. Professor Ayala Lipson is speaking about the an intro to Ta'anit. And um, we, we're going to hear from Meira Shapiro, who is a Shana Olive student in Migdal O's, who's been learning the DAF for a while already. Okay. We um, also, if you want to join a Siyum in Hebrew around Israel, there are Siyumim going on. So you can check the details on the registration form. Okay. Uh, starting with the top of our DAF, DAF Lamedalev. There's a study guide for today, so you can look. It's on the site. You can find it on the site or in the details of the podcast. Um, we were in the middle of a bright. We stopped kind of in the middle. What we started to see yesterday is we're starting to learn all sorts of laws of the shofar. Okay, what? Why do we do a tzkia, then a trua, then a tzkia? That's the one we're focusing on right now. First, we want to know where do we get shofar from, right? It kind of reminds me of the first Mishnah, if you remember, in Shas which is from where do we say Shema in the evening? And the Gemara said, where do you even get that there's Shema? It doesn't say in the Torah you're supposed to say Shema in the morning and the evening. It's kind of, at a certain point, something became so obvious, but sometimes you have to ask, well, where does it even come from? Same thing with shofar. They've been blowing shofar for so many generations, but the fact is it really doesn't say shofar in the Torah. Certain things we just assume. Of course it says it in the Torah, but really it doesn't say shofar anywhere in the Torah. So that we already understood, we get from the Yovel year on Yom Kippur. And that there's only really one option about. But how we blow the shofar, the fact that we put a tzkia, then a trua, then a tzkia, where do we get that from? So we're going to see that there's really two approaches. The first approach was what we saw, which is that there's this pshutal afanab, pshutal from the words in the verse, bavarta shofal, and then, and then it said at the end, ta'aviru shofal. So it says, bavarta shofal tua. So ha'avarta is the first tkia, then the shofa, then the trua, and then at the end it says va'avarta again. There's a trua. Now we want to say minayim l'shalosh shal shalosh shalosh. We're on the third line of today's daf. How do you know three sets of three though? That would teach you basically a trua, a tkia, and a trua. Why do we do it three times? So now we say Talmud Lomal. We're going to learn it from the pasuk there also va'avarta shofar trua. Shabbaton zichron trua and yom trua yelachen. There's three places where it says it in the Torah, this idea of trua. There's Havarta shofar trua, that was by the Yovel. There's yom trua yelachem, and there's Shabbaton zichron trua. There's three times where trua is mentioned. From there, we learn that you have to do the trua three times. If you have to do the trua three times and you need a tzikia before each one, that's going to get you up to nine. Okay, eventually we're going to get to why do we do. 30, and then really, why do we do 100? Because really, what, what the halacha says is that you really have to do 30 kolot, and then in addition, we add all sorts of other ones. Hopefully, we'll have time to discuss all of that later. So now we have three different verses that mention this trua relating to Yom Kippur, uh, Rosh Hashanah. They're, they're not all. One of them is Yom Kippur, but we already said, and that's what we're going to say right now, Theoretically, what you're really saying is, one for Yom Kippur and two for Rosh Hashanah. How do we know that we view this all as one whole unit? Ah, that's because we have a Gzerah Shavah, Tamu Lomar, Shvi'i, Shvi'i, L'Gzerah Shavah. That means, it says Chodesh HaShvi'i there, and it says Chodesh HaShvi'i by Yovel, right, and by Rosh Hashanah. We're going to learn from one to the other. Now, you have to realize before we move on that we already learned something with this Shvi'i, but we learned it a little bit differently. What we learned at the end of yesterday's daf was that since we learn for Yovel, whatever's true for Yovel, we're going to learn for Rosh Hashanah as well. But they learned it not from Gzei Rosh Hashanah. is when you have two words in the same verse, right, in different verses that are the same word, we can learn from one to the other. That's what they did right now. In the beginning of this Braita, they did what's called a Hekesh, which is comparing two things, not because the same word appears, 
But it says Shvi'i by Yovel. And we said you really didn't need that word because you would have known it was the seventh month because it's on Yom Kippur. And everyone knows Yom Kippur is the seventh month. So why did it say the seventh month? To teach you that everything that goes on in the seventh month with Shofar is all the same, meaning Rosh Hashanah. Okay, and that's how we got to it. And that's called a Hekesh. So later the Gemara is going to say, why did the same Brayta first employ a Hekesh and then employ a Gzera Shava when really they could have just used one of them? It seems strange that they switched from using a Hekesh to a Gzera Shava. So we'll get to that in a moment. Right now we're still in the bright, huh? So haketzad, how do we do it? Shalosh shehen tesha, you do three sets, which end up nine blasts, because you have tkia, trua, tkia, tkia, trua, tkia, tkia, trua, tkia. That's nine blasts. Shi'or tkia kitrua, this is similar to what we saw yesterday, although a little bit different. Remember we saw, shi'or tkia is either three trua, or maybe it's one trua, and maybe it depends on how you understand the use of trua in each one. The tzki is as long as the trua, and shi'or trua kishlosha shvarim. Ah, here it tells you the length of a trua is like three long moans, right, or size. So we have the shvarim, three of them, that's the same size as a trua, and that's the, the length, and that's the same length as the tzkiah. So now the Gemara is going to ask the question I told you already they were going to ask. Hi, Tana, that Tana here, me'ikara ma'itela be'hekesha. First it started with a hekesh, then it moved to use a gzera shava. It seems strange. So they say hachikam. What he really meant to say was the following. If there wasn't a gzera shava, I could prove it with a hekesh. But But now that I found a gzera shava, I don't really need the hekesh anymore. Because a gzera shava is pretty strong. Why would he suggest that if you didn't have a Gzera Shava, because if you remember, we've learned this many times, a Gzera Shava, you can't make up on your own. It's only something you have a tradition about. A Hekesh, you can make up on your own. You can see something and say, oh, look, there's a Hekesh on the Pasuk. Or Kavachomer, for example. You can say, oh, here's a Kavachomer. That is something you could do on your own. But you can't on your own do a, a Gzera Shava. So therefore, what he wanted to say is, if you didn't have the Gzera Shava, you could use a Hekesh. But... Anyway, I have a Gzera Shava, and then I don't really need the Hekish. Now, Tana, so that was the first approach, to learn it all from the Yom Kippur of the Yovel year. But now they say, Hi Tana, my Tana, have a Shava, Mimi Bal. Someone else, a different Tana, learned all these laws, although not all of them, obviously not the Shofar law, because we're going to learn it now from the trumpets, the Chatzot that they sounded in the Midbar. When it was time to travel, they would sound Chatzot When there was an enemy coming upon them, they would sound Chatzot When they wanted to gather the people, they would sound Chatzot trumpets. So there's a whole section that talks about the trumpets in Sefer Bamidbar. And therefore, they say, we're going to learn it from there. Now, obviously not the, how we know you use a Shofar, because that, for sure, you're going to have to learn from Yovel. But the other things we're going to learn from there, like a tzkia before and a tzkia after. Utikatem trua. So what do we learn from the words utikatem trua that appears in Bamidbar there? You should be tokea a trua. So what do they say? Tzkia b'fneatzma u trua b'fneatzma. This teaches you that there's something called a tzkia and there's something called a trua and they're separate sounds. So now the Gemara says, not necessarily from those words, you think those are two separate sounds. Oh, ain't no Ella, but maybe it's tkiau tua chati, right? Utkatem trua, literally the verb means, and you should blow a trua, which sounds like it could all be one, because tkia is used, the verb of tkia goes with the noun of trua. So it sounds like they really could be one. So why do you say they're two? So they say, well, kishahu omel, later, there in the verses in, in Bamidbar, it says, when you gather the nation together, there's a whole list. When you do this, you do that. When you do this, you do that. And you blow them each a little bit differently each time. And that way, right, people know. It's almost like a Morse code, right? If you hear a certain blast this way, you know that we're about to go to war. If you hear a certain blast this way, you know that we need to just get together. And if you hear, right, it's all different sounds. So now they say, Here you see two verbs. One is, Titkeu, below a tkia blast. And one is tariu, right? It says, do the tkia blast, don't do the trua blast. That makes it obvious that there's tkia separate and there's a trua separate. So, heveo male. From there we learned tkia abifnatsma, utru abifnatsma. Now we want to get to what we were really trying to get to here, which is uminayin shepshuta lefaneha. How do you know that the tkia comes before the, every trua? 
Talmud Lomar, Utekaatem Trua. There in the verses in Bamidbar, it says, you write, this is where we started. Utekaatem Trua. Notice the order, just like we have Vahavarta Shofar Trua. First Vahavarta, that showed the Tekiah comes before. Here, the verb Utekaatem comes before Trua. That means Tekiah comes before Trua. Minayin Shepshuta Lachareha. How do you know you need a Tekiah at the end then? Talmud Lomar, in a different verse there, in the same section, Trua Yitkau. It says Trua, and then it says Yitkau. The verb is after the trua. So there you see, you need a tekiah at the end. So that's answer number one. Rabbi Yishmael ben Asher, Rabbi Yochanan ben Baraka, Omer, you know what salich? You don't need. Now it's unclear, is he referring only to the last one, or is he referring to both? Okay, both the tekiah at the end and before, or maybe just the tekiah at the end. You'll see why. Harei, Omer, you don't need that verse you just said. Why not? Because it says, Utekaatem trua shinit. It says you should blow the trua a second time. This is after you blow it the first time for one of the instances. It says that you should blow it a second time. Now, if you already blew it and then it says that you should blow it, you don't need to say a second time. It's obvious it's a second time because you just said you do this and then you do that. It's quite clear it's a second time. You don't need that word. So why does it say that? Every time you have a trua, the tzkiah should be secondary to it. Now, shniala could mean the tzkiah is supposed to come after it. And then that means he only disagrees with the second pasuk proving it. The first one he agrees with the Tanakama. Alternatively, you could say secondary means secondary meaning less important, which means that the true is going to be in the center, surrounded by two tzkiah. So you could explain that what he actually means is both. He's learning both from there. Um, okay, Eli Ela Bamidbar. Now the big question is, right, it's only in the Midbar. How do we know that we can learn from the Midbar and the Chatzot's wrote in the Midbar to the Shofar on Rosh Hashanah? Be Rosh Hashanah Minayin, where do we get that from? Talmud Lomar, Trua, Trua L'Gzeira Shava. Again, we're going to use Gzeira Shava, which is, it says Trua in the, in the Chatzot's wrote in the trumpet section. And it says Trua, obviously, by Rosh Hashanah, Yom Trua, Zichon Trua. So we're going to make a Gzeira Shava, and what's true for one is true for the other. So we're going to learn from the Chatzot's wrote to the Shofar. Continuing on in this brayta, shalosh truot ne'emru berosh hashanah. There's three truot mentioned. This is exactly what we saw in the brayta before, although there's going to be a big difference. Okay, but right now it sounds exactly the same. Shabbaton zichron trua, yom trua, v'avarta shofar trua. Different order, but it basically quotes the same three verses, which are going to teach us that you need three truot. And once you have three truot, you need tzkiah before and tzkiah after, which is going to get you to three sets, altogether nine blasts. So now they say, Matzinu Lemidim, Shalosh Truot V'Shesh Tkiot Nemru B'Rosh Hashanah. So now we get it that there's three Tkiot, I'm sorry, three Truot and six Tkiot, and that's what you have to do on Rosh Hashanah. But here he adds an important line, which differs from the brighter we saw in the beginning of the page. Shtayim Midivrei Torah V'Echat Midivrei Sofrim. Above we said that all three are psukim from the Torah, and therefore they're all three by Torah law. And that's actually how we hold that the bare minimum that you need to do are nine kolot from the Torah. Everything else is rabbinic, but we're going to see those nine are going to become 30, and we'll get to that soon. But right now it's nine on a Torah level. According to this opinion, only six are on a Torah level. Two truot, four tkiot, the rest are rabbinic. How does he get that, even though he quoted it from three verses? Now, you might remember many times we connect things to verses but they're only rabbinic in nature. It's just connecting it to a verse, but really that verse is needed for something else. And therefore, you can't learn from it a Doraita law, a Torah law, but only a rabbinic law. And that's what we're going to say here. Shabbaton zichron trua v'avarta shofar midivrei Torah. Okay, those two are Torah law. Yom trua yelachem. Now remember, what brighter are we in? We're in the brighter that's talking about. We learn the laws of shofar from Bamidbar, from this, the trumpets. If that's the case, you need the word trua, not pasuk, for the gzeira shava. And if it's not free for the gzeira shava, if you remember, we had a whole thing about if something, when we learned about gzeira shava a long time ago, if you have a gzeira shava and the word isn't free, it's called afnuye, if it's not panoy, if it's not free available, then you can knock out the gzeira shava. So we, we want to say this pasuk is free. It's not needed for anything else. Really on a Torah level, it's teaching you that gzeira shava. And we learn it. We use the word trua there to learn that we learn all the laws from 
the Chatzot in the desert. And therefore, Yom Chorai Yalachem Litam it comes for its own drasha, and therefore it's only rabbinic, the, the obligation for the last set. We're now going to see a third opinion about this. Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachmani, Amar Rabbi Yonatan, Echad Midivrei Torah, Ushtayim Midivrei Sofrim. Only one is Torah level, meaning you really only need three blasts, a trua with its kia before its kia after, which by the way, probably makes the most sense that really you're supposed to hear one blast. One blast ends up with three because you need its kia before its kia after and finished. So he says you really only need one midivrei Torah. The other two are midivrei sofrim. So now he's going to have to explain why. That's the one that's clearly Doraita, even though what's interesting is it's about the Yovel year. But again, once we have the Gzera Shava between Yovel year and here, we can learn that. And Shabbaton Zichron Tu'ah, V'yom Tu'ah Yalachem L'Tamu Dohuba. Both of those have something else we learn from them, and therefore we can't learn that blowing the Trua on Rosh Hashanah is a Torah level obligation from those verses. My L'Tamu Dohuba, so what is the drasha that comes from those psukim. And as one we know, one is going to be the gzera shava of trua, trua. Okay, but the second one, well, he's now going to take yom trua yelachem, which the last guy said was a gzera shava. He's not going to learn the gzera shava from there. The gzera shava is going to be from shabbaton zichron trua. That trua is used to compare to the bidbar, to the trumpets. Yom trua yelachem is mebay libe yom velobalayla, to teach you that shofar blowing has to be during the day and not at night. This, by the way, is similar to what? What does it make you think about? Which we've made a number of comparisons already to the temple. The shofar is getting a level like in the temple. In the temple, everything was during the day. Nothing was done at night. This might be another proof. Right? We just saw one yesterday about not using urine to wash it out. kavod, Which is usually a term used with the temple. It's not respectful in the temple to use urine for anything. So here also, we're going to have another comparison to the fact that it has this level like a temple like temple worship, right? We saw it before also with, we saw it in uh, some other sugyo. Okay, so now they say, um, the idah, so if he's going to say Yom Tura'ah is for this Do'oraita law and therefore not free to teach that on a Torah level you're obligated in Shofar, so what do the other opinions do? Where do they learn by Yom Balada? We saw two other opinions. One that said, it's used for the Gzera Shava, but not for Bayom Yom Balada. And the other one said, all three are on a Torah level, there, you know, and then you wouldn't be able to learn beyond the Labalaila. So Nafkalemi be Yomakipurim. Ah, very easily they learn it from the Yomakipurim. There it says Yom. What's true for Yom Kippur is true for right, remember, talking about Yom Kippur in the Jubilee year. When you blow the shofar, it must be during the day and not at night, because it says Fafartim Shofar Tua be Yomakipurim. We always say Yom Kippur, you think of the you know, the whole day of Yom Kippur, including the night. But they say, No, 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 it says Biyom. The Yom means during the day. So now they have a great question, which is, wait a minute. We were in this drush, we were in this Brita, which was all, we're not learning laws of shofar from Yom Kippur. We're learning them all from the trumpets. So now that you're saying we can learn something from Yom Kippur, this law of daytime, and by the way, the three, right, the, the shofar blast is Doraita, was also learned from Yom Kippur. So if that's the case, he says, um, if you're already learning things from Yom Kippur, why don't you hold like that other Braita that learned all the laws of Shofar? The Tkiah before, the Tkiah after. Why don't you learn that from the Yom Kippur Psukim? So the answer, He doesn't think that those words can be used to teach you the Tkiah before and the Tkiah after. Why not? So what does he do with those words? Now, we actually learned this halacha already. He uses va'avarta for the law that Ramatna said. You have to blow the shofar in the way it was on the animal, which means, if you remember, you can't heat it up and widen the narrow part of the shofar and narrow the wider part of the shofar and blow the opposite way. You can't do that. You have to use it the way it was on the animal. So therefore, um, we're now going to say, that's what Havarta comes to teach you. Ta'aviru rachmana ne'abre bayad. If you wanted to learn it from the word ta'aviru shofar b'chol artzachem, right, is that what it is? Uh, yeah, ta'aviru shofar b'chol artzachem. You want to say that teaching about the tzikia after? He says, no, no, no. You would have thought, if you're going to learn it from that, and say that, you might think, what's the mitzvah? 
not to blow the shofar, but what is the word ta'aviru? Pass it around. Sounds like maybe you're supposed to walk around from place to place holding a shofar in your hand and kind of like a mascot. You know, you have this symbol and you walk around carrying the shofar from place to place. So we don't want to learn the laws from there because it doesn't really sound like you actually have to blow the shofar. It's a bit of a strange thing to think about, but on the other hand, maybe there's something to it, right? We do other mitzvot with carrying. We carry a lulav and an etrog, so maybe you'd carry a shofar. Again, you have to re remove what you are so used to, that of course the shofar is for blowing, but maybe not. So therefore, he doesn't want to learn the laws from there, and that's why this Tana chose to learn them from the chatzot from the trumpets. Even though there's obviously, I mean, I might even just suggest there's difficulty with both methods of deriving it. Number one, it would be weird that we're going to learn laws of Rosh Hashanah, which come up every year, from laws of Yom Kippur in the Jubilee year, which comes up once every 50 years, which is such a rare occurrence. And yet we're going to learn all the basic laws from there. That's number one. To learn it from the Chatzot the obvious problem is those are trumpets and not a shofar. So it's a little bit strange as well. So now the Gemara is going to say, well, what's the response to, we just said the Tana from before, we learned it from the Tana from here, who learned it from the trumpets, didn't want to learn it from the Jubilee year of Sukim because of these issues. Uh, Bavarta, you want it for Abmana. And the, sorry, the, right. And then Ta'aviru just sounds like you pass it around and that's why he didn't learn it. So Idach, what's the other opinion going to do with this? De Rabmatna Mishane Bidibulhe. Because it uses the word Veha'avarta and it didn't say to blow, we can learn two things from it. In other words, the, the usage of the word teaches us, because it used a different word, you can actually learn two things from it. Taviru biyad lo matzit amar, tegamar avara avarami moshe. Taviru, you wouldn't, taviru biyad, we have precedent for the fact that lahavir has sound associated with it. Even though you might say lahavir normally is just passing something, I'll show you a proof, and therefore I wouldn't have thought that taviru shofar means carry it. Why not? We can learn from Moshe. It says by Moshe, Vigitzav Moshe Viaviru Kol Bemachane. He commanded them to make a sound in the Machane, Lavir Kol. Lavir Kol is, here you see, the verb Aval with sound. So therefore, it's obvious, Vavar Shofar. And that's why the person who derived it all from there really derived it from there. Okay, so now. <clears throat> So now we've gotten the, all that down pad. So mala halam bikol, afkam bikol. Just like that's with sound, this is also with sound. Ulahai tana demai telami midbar. And for the tana who learns it from the midbar, now we're back to that. I mala halam chatzotzot, afkam chatzotzot. That's a basic question I asked before. If this is chatzotzot, then maybe you, you would learn that on Rosh Hashanah, if you're going to learn almost all the laws from there, other than that one about it being during the day. But everything else, and, and one that it's still right, have, you know, another time, another set. But otherwise, you should really learn that it's a chatzot Tamud lamal. Now we're going to learn it from another verse, but not a Torah verse, from Tilim. Remember, we keep going back to this pasuk. And the truth is, I even think it goes back to the beginning of the Masechet. It's trying to remind us. It often happens at the end. We're reminded of things from the beginning. It's a reference to all the Kiddush HaChodesh. If you forgot, that was what the whole beginning of the Masechet was about, right? Now we're so into Shofar. But, which means blow in the Chodesh Shofar when the moon is covered, right? When is the moon covered? Only The only holiday is so there it seems clear the Torah says even though it's not the Torah Rahman is usually the Torah but here it's actually the um, the not the Torah but the but the Tehillim from there we learn that it's Shofar okay now we get to Itkin Rabbi Avau Bekesri okay we finally get to what we do today so we're going to get there a little bit slowly but we're going to get there he made a takana in Kesaria. It seems it's Kesaria. This is Rabbi Avau. He's a student of Rabbi Yochanan. Okay, so he institutes the following. This is what we call Tashrat. Okay, where we say, this is one of the first blow that we do in the shofar blast is Tkia Shvarim Trua Tkia. Until now, we've just been talking about Tkia Trua Tkia or possibly Tkia Shvarim Tkia. That was the whole debate yesterday. So now he said, let's do tkiya shvarim trua tkiya. Why? Manavshah. Because either way you look at it, you'll basically resolve all your issues. 
E yalule yalil, if it's a whale, lav it's kia tru it's kia, then you've done tkia tru it's kia. E ginu ganach, if it's a, a long moan, three long moans, le avitz kia shlosha shvarim utkia, then you've done your tkia, three shvarim, and your tkia, and you're good. Basically, this is the, the best solution to be yotze, to be fulfilling all the different approaches. To which the Gemara says, not really though. Miss, oh, and then just one second, and therefore they're just commenting, right? He was obviously not sure which way to hold on this debate, so let's just do both. But Matkiflara maybe sorry, Dilma Yulule Hava. Maybe it is a whale, in which case, exactly what I see you're asking in the chat, You have a break now. You you need to do trua tkia trua tkia. You can't do tkia shvarim trua tkia. Now you have a break in between the tkia and the trua. That's a problem. So what does he answer? Jahadar avid tkia trua tkia. Oh, what I meant is, well, then afterwards you do tkia trua tkia. In other words, do tkia shvarim trua tkia, and then do tkia trua tkia. Obviously, we're still going to have another problem, which is matkifla ravina v'dilmi ginuche hava. But maybe it's a moan v'kamavsik trua ben shvarim litzkia. But then you're going to have a break between the the trua and the tkia. So that's a problem. So you're, I see you're asking all the questions in the chat that the Gemara is going to get to. So hold off. Dehadar avid tkia shlosha shvarim utkia. So he says, oh no, what I meant is right. Do tkia shvarim trua tkia, then do tkia trua tkia. Then do tkia shvarim tkia. Now you already get why we do what we do today, but we're still going to have a question with this. So that's how, we're, I, 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 that way, if it's really shvarim, then you won't have a break. So then the obvious question becomes, Ela rabbi avau ma'itkin. But then, then I don't get what he instituted. If it's a shvarim, then you did the shvarim. If it's a true, you did the true. So why do you need to do tkia shvarim true tkia? What does that do for you? So now they say the following. What he really wasn't sure about was Dilma Ganach Yalil. Maybe the sound is both a moan and a wail. Maybe that's what you need. You need a, it's a combo. So then the obvious question, you might not have thought of this, but right. So basically now we have Shvarim Trua. Trua and Shvarim, and with that we cover all our bases, except for one. What didn't we cover? You should do Trua Shvarim. Why do we do Shvarim Trua and not Trua Shvarim? If we're worried that it's a cry, that the cry is somehow a different sound, and it's a combo of those two sounds, maybe it's a combo, but starting with the short wail and going to the long moans. So why don't you do that way? So the answer is stama de milta ki mitra beinish milta baresha ganach bahadu yalo. When somebody cries, right? Think about a baby crying. You know, first they kind of hold their breath, and it's like this, and then, ah, right? So it's it's this long sound, and then it gets to the short sounds. People don't go, ah, ah, and then, ah, right? Not not usually. Maybe one can make an argument, but so therefore, that's why we do it in that way. Okay. This is fascinating because now we understand why we do it the way we do it. Before we get to the, the continuation, even though I could theoretically say this later, but I'll say it now already. First of all, Rabbi Shavir Gaon asks a great question. He says, I don't understand. What happened before Rabbi Avau's times? If we've been doing shofar for all these generations, what, they didn't know how they did it? You know, and, and they were doing it wrong all along? Or they, It seems very strange. So he understands, which not everybody does, but it's an interesting approach. He says, this isn't halacha. It's not like we're not sure. Is this the way to do it or is this the sound, right? It's not like there's a set sound that was clear from the Torah, what has to be done. And we're just trying to fulfill all options and therefore do them all this way. Really, it just needs to be some sort of wail, cry, sound, something. It doesn't really matter. You're going to be yotze if you did it one way. But... Because there's different possibilities, and you know, if you think about it, I, I don't know for you, but when I hear shofar, sometimes it makes you think about different things, and one sound makes you think of one thing, and a different sound makes you think of something else. And what he was basically saying was adding different possibilities, not that it's halachic, and if you don't do this, you're not going to be yotze or mitzvah of, of shofar. It was just he was allowing for different sounds and different possibilities, you know, and that, and that it, it's, it's wasn't a, the main thing he's basically saying is it wasn't a halachic thing. Okay? It's not like you have to hear each one for halakhic reasons. Other people obviously view this as very halakhic. And then there's interesting debates about 
just if we talk about where do you add the shofar? Okay, let's right now we're up to thirty basically because we got to nine of tkiya trua tkiya. We have nine of tkiya shvar and tkiya because again, if you hold and especially if you view it not like Rosh Hashanah but yes, it's halachic. So you need three sets of everything, and then you're going to need three sets of tkiya shvar and trua tkiya, and those are four sounds because the shvar and trua sound counts as two different sounds. So then you end up with all together thirty kolot. We do 30 kolot, right, before the Amidah. We do 30 kolot in the Amidah. Where does that come from? So we also saw it already in the Gemara earlier. They talked about the Tekiot and Me'umad and the Tekiot and Me'ushav, if you remember. There's different opinions about whether you do it during the Amidah, during the silent Shmon Esrei, or only when the Chazan goes over the, the Shmon Esrei. There's a debate about that. There's interesting debates. What we do is, at least in my custom, I don't know about everyone here, but when you do it with the brachot of Machiot, Zichronot, and Shofarot, you do the whole, one set of each, right? Tkia, Shvarim, Trua, Tkia, Tkia, Trua, uh, I think it's Shvarim first, and then Tkia, Trua, Tkia. Okay? That's, the, that's a set of, of basically your 10 kolot. So then you end up with 30 with the three blessings. But not everybody agreed. Some people thought you just do Tkia, Shvarim, Tkia for one, Tkia, Trua, Tkia for another, Tkia, Shvarim, Trua, Tkia for another. And that's a whole different approach. You don't need each one for each blessing. That maybe you just need all together to get to all of them. There are all different approaches here. Many, many different opinions. Um, anyway, we're going to stop for right now because there's so much more to be said, but we're going to go on. So now the Mishnah had said, we're going back to the Mishnah. Uh, we'll get to the hundred after. Um, fine, maybe I'll get to the hundred now. So the hundred, why do we do a hundred? Some people say it's just in case you didn't hear them right, so we're going to add some after the Shemona Esrei, and after we're all done with everything, let's just add more in case you, in case that. It could be also maybe because people came late to shul, so we added them. Maybe that's another reason. Um, but a, a, another reason that's given by the tradition is that, if you remember, we mentioned Sisra's mother. She cried out. She wailed. And they say, the Medrash says she wailed a hundred times that night. And some people say we want to do it. Can they get her wails? We do 100 kolot, so maybe that's why. Um, there's different opinions as to why exactly we do it. Okay, but that's clearly rabbinic. That way, if for some reason you didn't make it to shul and someone blows the shofar for you, you only do the 30, you don't do all the 100. Okay, moving on. I'm sure there's other reasons. I see someone quoting something that I don't remember. Um, I don't remember seeing about Sari Menu and the al -Qaeda. I'm sure there's other reasons given, but those are the main ones. So now we had this thing, if you start blowing your tekiah and you blow it super long, a double tekiah, it still only counts as one. Okay, that's not really what they're referring to now. Now they're going to talk about something else. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Shama Tesha Tekiah, V'Tesha Sha'ot Hayom. We're going to get into all sorts of other laws of tekiah shofar. If you blasted, you heard nine blasts, but throughout the day, okay, one an hour. So, Yatsa, no problem, you can do that. Tanya Namihachi, brighter to support this halacha of Rabbi Yochanan, Shema Tesha Tkiyo Betesha Sha'o Biyom Yatsa. Now the brighter is going to continue. Mitish'a b'nei adam ke'echad lo yatsa. But if you heard from nine people, it doesn't work. The assumption at once, okay, this means if nine people, they all line up and each one blows one of the blasts that you're supposed to hear, that doesn't work. First of all, we learned Trey Kale Lo Mishdame, you can't hear two things at once, but then we actually said that you could. You could hear them all at once because... You, the mitzvah is chaviv alecha, right? Or chaviv alech. You really want to keep the mitzvah so, and it's once every whatever, you can make an effort and hear, but that's different because then that's when you're trying to hear one thing. Here you want to hear all the kolot. You can't possibly hear all nine at the same time. There's actually a whole, it's a little more complicated. Rashi doesn't like this. Girsi has different girsi understands this differently. I'm going to leave that aside right now, but there are a bunch of different ways of understanding this line. If one person blows the tekiah and a different person blows the trua after the tekiah was blown, that's fine. You don't have to hear it all from one shofar blower. Even with, with um, breaks, right? Splits between them and even all day long. By the way, what's interesting? We talk about that they're mentioning things from earlier in the Masecha. Remember the word serugin? They didn't know what it meant. So they asked the, the ama, the maidservant of of. Um, of Rebbe, and then she said to the rabbis, you know, why are you all leaving? Why are you all coming in Beserugin, one after the other, not in a row? So it's funny now they're using it as if everybody knows what it means. 
Um, so that's the end of the bright and now they want to question Rabbi Yochanan Rabbi Yochanan said you could hear nine kiyot nine hours of the day no problem in other words one an hour without a problem right it doesn't really talk about hefsek here which is a little bit strange anyway they say how could Rabbi Yochanan have said this he said in a different occasion in the name of Rabbi Shimon ben Yehot Sadak when it comes to saying halal or when it comes to reading the Megillah Let's say you stop in the middle. Let's say you have to go to the bathroom or something, or for whatever reason you stop in the middle and you come back. If you've left the amount of time it would take to say the whole thing or to finish the whole thing, then you have to, it sounds like actually just to finish it for wherever you're up to, let's say it would have taken five minutes for you to finish it and you get back in four minutes so you can continue where you're up to. If you got back after five minutes, you'd have to go back to the beginning. So that sounds like it's a unit. You'd have to do it all within a certain time frame. So how could he possibly say you could blow the chauffeur in nine hours of the day? You know, one an hour. So they say, ah, oh, that's not a problem. Very easily answered. Lokasha, ha di day, ha di rabbe. In our case, he was giving his own opinion. In that case, he was quoting his rabbi. It says, Mishum Rabbi Shimon ben Yehot Sadak. So it wasn't that he held that way. He was just quoting it in the name of his rabbi. But, we're not really satisfied with that answer. Bidide lo, what he doesn't really hold that way. We're going to, what his rabbi said he does. Because look, there was a story. Ha Rabbi Avau, remember I told you he was his student. So here's a story with him and his rabbi. Rabbi Avau, right, he was the student of Rabbi Yochanan. Have a shakil va'azil batre de Rabbi Yochanan. He was walking on the street right behind Rabbi Yochanan. Have a kari kriyachman. He was saying kriyachma. Ki matalim va'ot metunafot. He got to these dark, the dirty alleyways. Ishtik, he stopped davening because it wasn't appropriate when you're walking through this dirty alley to be saying Shema. Batar de Khalif, after he passes the alley, Amar Le, Amar Le says to Rabbi Yochanan, Ma'u Ligmol, can I finish now? Or do I have to go back to the beginning? Amar Le, Im Shahita, Kadeh Ligmol, et Kulach, Hazor Rosh. If you waited long enough to finish the whole, the, you know, the time it would have taken you to finish the whole thing and you're beyond that time, then go back to the beginning. So now what do you see? Clearly, Rabbi Yochanan thinks you have to go back to the beginning and you have to do it all within a certain time frame. So how could he have said that by shofar? So, hachi ka'amrele. So first of all, I see you're asking, don't you have to say Shema sitting down? You don't. It's said in, if you remember in Brachot, you could say, while you're walking, while you're this, okay? And, and actually, we're going to see right now that Rabbi Yochanan disagreed with him. And there's a debate about what Rabbi Yochanan disagreed about, whether he disagreed that he even needed to, to stop that theoretically, according to some, you could just hold your nose and keep walking and keep saying Shema. That's a possibility. Okay? So now we're going to see. He said, Hachi Kamerle. This is how you should understand Rabbi Yochanan. Lididi lo Sfirali. I don't hold like you do. And there's a debate. I don't hold like what? I don't hold that you needed to stop, like I just said a second ago. And therefore, right? And, and I don't, also don't hold that you need to wait. Okay, that you need to worry about the time frame. In other words, theoretically, you could say it also later in the day. It doesn't, you could split it up, like he said about shofar. But ledidach desvir alach, but according to you who thinks, now again, it's not clear what it is. Does he just disagree with him about the waiting issue? Or does he also disagree even with the fact that he stopped? The fact that he stopped, that, that's an irrelevant point really for our sugya. So some people hold that way, but some people say, no, no, no. He really just disagrees about the point that we're talking about, which is, In other words, according to you who thinks that you have to do it as a unit, so then I'll tell you what the definition of time would be, which is the time it would have taken for you to finish. That would mean you'd have to go back to the beginning. But I don't even agree with you about that. And possibly I don't even agree with you that you needed to stop. In which case we could keep Rabbi Yochanan's statement without a problem. Tanu Rabbanan, new brighter. Tkiot en ma'akvot zo etzo. Brachot en ma'akvot zo etzo. Tkiot u brachot shal Rosh Hashanah v'shal Yom HaKippurim ma'akvot. Okay, I wanted to read the last line because it's clear then that the tkiot and the blessings that we're talking about in the beginning are not of Rosh Hashanah. Yom Kippur here, we mean the Yom Kippur of the Yovel year, of the Jubilee year. So we're now comparing, and what are we comparing? Tkiot and brachot of fast days, which is our great lead into the next Masechet. We already, from the middle of Masechet, had a lead into to Ta'aniyot, where we were comparing the shofar to the Chatzot's road and all the different things, what, right? What is, is it gold or silver and all the differences between the fast days and Rosh Hashanah. Here also we're comparing, right? I think that there's a lot of comparisons we're going to see as we learn Masechet Ta'anit, right? You would think that Ta'anit and Rosh Hashanah are very different, right? You would connect maybe more Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur together and put in a category. You would never really think to compare Ta'aniyot. 
But clearly, and maybe that's why Rosh Hashanah is a little bit out of order in the order of the Gemara, and it appears right before Ta'anit, because there's many comparisons between Rosh Hashanah and Ta'anit. So here's one. They both have shofar blasts, and they both have extra blessings that you insert into the prayer. Okay, there it's six blessings. By us, it's three. There it's six. Okay, we're going to have that in, we'll get to which fast you add them in, and we're talking about fast when there's no rain. Okay, not a regular fast day. Okay, that's what we don't know from these 24 blessings. We don't really do this anymore. So now, on the fast days, if you don't do all the tzikiot, it's fine. You're, you, you know, you did whatever you did. You don't have to do them all. They're not viewed as a set. Brachot emak votzotzo. Same thing. If you added some of the blessings and not all the blessings in the Shemona Esrei, it would be fine. But tzikiot, the brachot shalosh and avashayom kippurim ma'akavot. Now, there's two ways to read this. Either it means you have to do the blasts together with the blessings, or maybe not even together, but as a unit, you need to have shofar blasts and you need to have blessings. And if you miss one of them, you don't fulfill anything. Or maybe it means that the tzikiot as a unit are ma'akev one or the other, right? Meaning if you didn't do all the tzikiot, then you'd have a problem. And the brachot also, let's say you did machuyon and zichronot, but didn't say shofarot. You wouldn't even fulfill your obligation of saying machuyon and zichronot because they're all a unit. Okay, so again, two ways of view- viewing it is the whole thing one unit, or is each one an independent unit that you have to have the unit, otherwise it doesn't work. My time, what's the reason? Amaraba, Amar Kadosh Burhu, Imru Lefanai Berosh Hashanah, Malchu Yot Zichronot Veshofarot. Obviously, God didn't say this, but it's as if God says to us, Say Malchu Yot Zichronot and Shofarot in front of me. Malchu Yot Kadeshet Hamlichuni Alechem. First, you have to make me king, right? This is, a, this is a unit. You can't just do one without the other because they work together. First, you have to say, I want you to be my king. Then you have to say, well, remember us in a good way. Now that you're our king, so we're going to you to ask for you to remember us in a good way. And how do we do this? So that makes them all one unit. And possibly also the shofar goes, it's inherently a part of it, right? But shofar means two things. Number one, with the bracha of shofarot is representing the shofar. But also maybe this is saying that's why you need the brachas to go with the shofar because the whole way you do this, it's almost like you're you're doing a whole activity here. You're blowing the shofar in order to make a king, in order to remind God to remember us. Okay, and this is all viewed as one unit. What if you made the bracha but you didn't have a shofar at the time, and then after you got a shofar, then it se- then you could blow the shofar after. This, by the way, would have then if mean that if you do think it's mach vote, so it's so it doesn't necessarily mean they have to be at the same time because as long as you've done it in the course of the day, it works, not necessarily with each other. So now they derive from this mission. Tama de lo havale shofar mi kaha. Sounds like only if you didn't have a shofar before. But ha havale shofar mi kaha ki shama lehu a seder brachot shama lehu. Sounds like if you did have a shofar before, you would clearly put them with the blessings. And that's where we get that they go with the blessings of the Amidah. Again, with a bit of a debate about whether it's in the silent Shmon Esrei or, right, it does, it's not clear here, or only in the, when the Shliach Tzibor says it. Now we're going to have a story. Rav Papa Bar Shmuel, Kam Litzaluye, he got up to Davin. Amar Leshame, Leshame, he says to his attendant, Can you hear a lot Kali? When I signal you in my silent Shmona Esrei, blow the shofar for me, which sounds like you do it in the silent prayer. Amar Le Rava, Lo Amru, Ela Bechever Ir, what are you doing? You only need to do this in the community when you're having a communal prayer. You're davening by yourself. You don't do it by yourself. Okay, the tzikiot don't go with the bracha when you're an individual. Okay, we're going to talk at the seal more about this individual versus community. We're going to talk about that concept. Amar Le Rava. Uh, sorry, Tanya Namihachi, Brighta to support this. Keshu Shoman Shoman Ala Seder Val Seder Bracho. When he hears the shofar blast, he hears them in their shofar blast order and in the order of the blessings. But, Bamed Varim Amurim, when is this? Bechever ear, only if you're in a communal prayer. Aval Shalom Bechever ear, Shoman Ala Seder. But when you're not in a communal prayer, then you hear the shofar blast according to their order. But, Shalom Al Seder Bracho. But you don't do it with the blessings. The Yachid Shalotaka, this Brighta just continues with some other things. If you didn't do your own Tkiah, even if the friend already fulfilled their obligation, they can do it for you. We talked about this before. The Yachid Shaloberech, En Chaveron Mavarech Alav. But if you didn't make a bracha, your friend can't do the bracha for you. We're not talking about the bracha of Shavu, we're talking about davening. So it's like, right, I wake up in the morning and I ask my friend, can you daven for me? Right? You can't do that. It's like you can't go to the bathroom for someone else. You can't pray for somebody else. 
although we're going to see maybe in a certain way you can, we're going to finish with, up with that issue. Umitzvah betok in yoterminum evarchim. If you have a hierarchy, better to blow than to make the brachot. Ketzav, what would be a situation? Shtei ayarot, there's two cities. Be'echad toki inu be'echad mevarchim. Hochim l'makom shetoki inu be'en hochim l'makom shemevarchim. If in one place they have a shofar, but they don't have a baal tefillah who can daven. In the other place they have someone who davens, but they don't have a shofar blower. Go to the place with the shofar blower. So the Gemara says, pshita, that's obvious. Hadoraita ad rabbanam. One is rabbinic and one is Torah law. Torah law, you have to blow the shofar. Brachot or only mid rabbanam. Let's say you're not sure you're going to make it in time for the shofar. You still go there even though you're not sure you might make it, whereas you know you'll make it to the bracha. Okay, this is a very interesting look at about how the shliach tzibor can daven for the community. The Tzitana Kama says no. Every individual has to daven. Rabban Gamliel, and this is why I said I'm going to come back to maybe someone could pray for you. He says the shliach tzibor, the chazan, can pray for the people. Very interesting machlok, and it seems to be not just Rosh Hashanah related, but generally related. Tomorrow, at the, or as Rosh Hashanah at the same on Sunday, we'll talk about why the Masechet ends with this. Tanya. Amru lelo Rabban Gamliel, litvarecha, lama tzibor mitpalalin. So they say to Rabban Gamliel, so then why does the tzibor daven if they don't need to? Amar lahem, kedei lasdir shlech tzibor tefilato, to give him time to set up his prayers, to organize himself. Why he didn't do it at home is a good question, but they give him time. Amar lahem Rabban Gamliel, so they said to Rabban Gamliel, according to you, why do you need Shlech Tzibor if everybody davens on their own? Well, there are people who don't know how to daven, so for them, he can fulfill their obligation. Amar Lahem, so he says to them, if that's the case, if you think that it works, what's the difference if they know or they don't know? If it works to be, one person could write the chazan, could be the representative for all the people, then should also be able to fulfill it for anybody. So I'm a rabbi, Barbara Khan, I'm a rabbi Yochan, and we're going to start this topic today and finish it at the seum. He says, Modim chachamim Rabban Gamliel. In the end, the rabbis agree with Rabban Gamliel that really, like he had a good argument there, really the chazan can be motzi everybody. The rav amar, adayin hi machloket. Rav says, no way, they still argue with him. Shama Rabbi Chia berei de Rabba Bar Nachmani. Azal Amar the Shama kamei de Rabbi Dimi Bar Chinana the Shmata. He said this following thing in front of Rav Dimi. Amar le Hachi Amar Rav Adayni Machlok. And he brought what Rabbi Yochanan said, and Rav Dimi said to him, No, no, no. Rav says it's still a Machlok. Amar le Rabba Bar Chana Nami Hachi Kamar. They said Rabba Bar Chami also says it's Adayni Machlok. Ki Amar Rabbi Rabbi Yochanan the Hashmata. If the Galeri Shlakish Amar Adayin Hi Machlok, and as Rabbi Rabbi you missed the rest of his statement. He said Rabbi Yochanan things that they agreed with him, but Rish Lakish disagreed and said Adayin Hi So it's not just Rab; it's also Rish Lakish who disagrees. We'll end with a question: Umi Amar Rabbi Yochanan Hachi? Did Rabbi Yochanan really say that the rabbis agreed with Rabban Gamliel that the Shlach Tzibur could fulfill the obligation for other people? Vaha Amar Rabbi Chanan Tzipor Ra'a Amar Rabbi Yochanan Hilchetak Rabban Gamliel. He said, Rabbi Chana from Tzipori, said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Halach is like Rabban Gamliel. When you say that Halach is like Rabban Gamliel, what does that mean? Halacha michal de plige. You only say that if they disagree. So it seems like even Rabbi Yochanan thinks they disagree. We had a lot of questions saying, what Rabbi Yochanan holds? Does he really hold this? What about that? Anyway, we're going to end with that question, and we will finish it up tomorrow at, uh, the, on Sunday at the Siyum. Have a great Shabbat, everyone.